Insulin resistance impacts a lot of uh, body parts, as we all know, from the brain to the heart to the lungs to the eyes. Um, <clears throat> have you ever heard that it impacts the prostate as well? I mentioned that on a video a couple of years ago, and um, one of my good friends and a very smart guy uh, happens to be a, a long-term prostatic cancer survivor. He corrected me and said, no, it's all androgens, uh, no association between insulin resistance or diabetes and prostate disease. Uh, I didn't take it any further, um, <clears throat> but I decided to now. John uh, recently shared a, um, a, an article with me that I thought was very, very interesting in this space. Now, that article is going to raise the question of, well, assuming there is a relationship between BPH and insulin resistance, just what is that relationship and what's, uh, what's driving it? Well, if you'll be patient with me, I will, uh, I will go there in just a minute. This is a video, a YouTube video from uh, UCLA Urology talking about prevention of uh, prosthetic hypertrophy uh, by managing, by increasing and improving diabetes control. We'll go back to that video in just a minute. But what was the article that John sent? It's in PLOS One, just a reminder, that stands for a Public Library of Science. Their articles are all uh, open and available, and I will uh, I'll give you a link to that article under the video. The title is, Metformin Inhibits the Proliferation of Benign Prosthetic Epithelial Cells. So without getting too detailed in terms of reading what they did, here's what they did. They got benign prosthetic hypertrophy cells, epithelial cells, which they call BPE uh, a couple of times in this article. They also got some normal prostate cells. They grew them in culture. And then they did something very interesting. They looked at the... Um, the viability of those cells after putting those cells in different amounts and different time periods, different concentrations of metformin. So <clears throat> the question is, does metformin impact the benign prosthetic epithelial cells? And the answer was, it sure did. The second question was, well, does that have anything to do with IGF? So, they said they had previously found that, stromal, uh, that IGF promotes uh, benign prosthetic uh, epithelial cell pr uh, proliferation, and they mentioned some mechanisms. So they looked at that as well. Now, how, again, how did they do that? They looked at uh, IGF receptors. They looked at proteins and mark biomarkers associated with uh, IGF-related uh, processes within the prostate. So methods, basically they mentioned a couple of the cell lines that they used, and then they mentioned how they measured them. Uh, they, used them with, uh, they measured them using Western blot and ELISA. Those are both um, common ways of, of measuring proteins, and uh, proteins basically in, in, um, in cultures. So <clears throat> what did they find? Well, a quick way to find what... Uh, to get some really good information on a study is to look at the um, images that they provided. So this on this top image, you see this. There's a clear uh, pattern here with decreasing bars. What's is it, what, what's the association here? These are viable cells, um, and this is metformin concentration of metformin millimolar. So the higher the concentration of met, metformin, the lower the amount of viable cells. So that's interesting and again pretty dramatic. Let's look at the next um, the next one. Um, <clears throat> this is these are some of the immunofluorescent images, the, the dark blue ones. Uh, you really can't see them that well. You can go in and take a look. I, I don't really think they add a whole lot other than just helping people see uh, what they saw. The, uh, if you look at the top, again, they, they tend to continue to tell the story. 
If you put metformin, 5 millimolar, in these uh, solutions, you tended to get huge decrease in insulin-like growth factor function. That's interesting. Again, uh, Western blot, these are the, the little images up on the top here, top left-hand corner, where they're looking at the amount of uh, metformin. The higher the amount of metformin, the less these uh, dark spots on the, uh, on the Western blot. Basically, again, showing when metformin's in the uh, mixture, it greatly decreases IGF-related function on uh, benign prosthetic hypertrophy cells. A couple of more quick images and I will uh, finish out. Again, more images very similar. Uh, these are faux ERK and faux AKT. Again, uh, bio um, markers of IGF function. And again, as you see, relative abundance of uh, cells greatly decreased with metformin. Decreased number of cells and decreased biomarkers of uh, hypertrophy. Uh, again, just more, more of the same. So, <clears throat> that's a very interesting, um, interesting thing to think about if you're thinking about the potential association of insulin uh, resistance to um, prosthetic hypertrophy. So, uh, in the second paragraph under their introduction, they mention, accumulation of epidemiological evidence demonstrates that BPH is associated with diabetes. That is, diabetes increases the risk of BPH. In 66, one of the first publications reported that diabetes was more frequently diagnosed among patients who, uh, were, who had a prostatectomy. Uh, more recently, in a series of cross, early cross-sectional studies, Hammerstein's group reported a direct correlation between insulin levels and annual BPH growth rates in diabetic patients. Uh, other groups confirm that hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance are independent risk factors of BPH development. Together, these studies suggest that BPH is directly associated with diabetes. Now again, if you go back to, um, this is a, a video from UCLA Urology Department, and they're basically talking about uh, BPH and how to manage it. Now, they don't recommend use of uh, metformin, and I don't either. It's not a, that's not a standard treatment. Again, this video is not so much about how to treat BPH, it is about an association of BPH or benign prosthetic hypertrophy with um, diabetes or insulin resistance. They do mention it in, later on in the video, and again, we'll run through that real quick. In terms of prevention, studies have shown that the more men exercise and attain better control of their diabetes, the more dramatic the reduction in risk for BPH in LUTs. So there you have it. Uh, there were two points here, and one thing that was not the point. It's not the point to say this is a treatment. Metformin is not considered a treatment for uh, BPH. There are better medications for that. But the two points are, number one, uh, maybe to help motivate folks to uh, manage their insulin resistance better. Make sure that you're um, <clears throat> doing everything you can to keep good control of your prediabetes metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance. The second point is a, interest, a science interest question. So the first one is motivation, the second one is science interest. There, is, there does appear to be an association between insulin resistance and BPH. Uh, this study would certainly indicate maybe that association is associated with IGF and increased insulin. Um, more on that topic later. Again, if you've made it this far, thank you for your interest.